Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, where today we find Chaos Bug 45 in a fairly typical tier 10 battle here on the loop map. One aircraft carrier, five battleships, four destroyers, and two extremely nervous cruisers on each team. Chaos Bug is in the brand new, all singing, all dancing HMAS Vampire 2. It's probably worth pointing out that no Royal Australian Navy warship was ever called Vampire 2. There were two HMAS Vampires. Pennant number D68, a V-class destroyer, uh, originally of the Royal Navy but later commissioned into the Royal Australian Navy which I believe exists in the game as a tier 3 premium. And this one, Pennant number D11, a daring class destroyer and the largest warship ever built in Australia. Not the largest warship to serve in the Australian Navy. The Australian Navy had aircraft carriers, it's just that they weren't built in Australia. This one, however, was built at the Cockatoo Docks and Engineering Company in Sydney in 1959 and would go on to serve Australia during the Vietnam War, primarily as an escort ship for the troop and supply ship HMAS Sydney, transporting troops and supplies between Australia and the mainland of Vietnam. She was eventually, after a long and distinguished career, decommissioned in 1986. And in 1991, she was preserved as a museum ship in Sydney, Australia. To this day, she remains the only surviving example of the daring class of World War II destroyers, and she's also the largest single museum piece in all of Australia. The fact that there are now two HMAS vampires in World of Warships has apparently led Wargaming to believe that people might get confused and accidentally division up in their Tier 3 HMAS vampire with a Tier 10 division mate, somehow managing to not realise that they haven't in fact picked the Tier 10 version instead, led to Wargaming christening the Tier 10 version of this daring class destroyer as HMAS Vampire 2, just to clear up any confusion. Yes, they really think you're all that stupid. Although, you know, to be completely fair, you, you can guarantee that if they hadn't differentiated between the names of the two ships, at some point somebody would have done exactly that. So fair enough. We oh, hang on a second. Is that two sets of five torpedoes? Who's that going to be? Yeah, doesn't exactly narrow it down much. It could have been the Grozovoy, the Halland, or the Gearing. The only one it couldn't have been is the Z-52, which has two sets of four. The only thing we know for sure is that there are no enemy destroyers inside Cap Circle Alpha because Chaos Bug, in company with the Schmarland, has just flipped it. And the Schmarland, of course, has radar. So that's going to be useful. Of course, there's also an enemy Des Moines off to the right-hand side of the screen in the direction of Cap Circle Bravo, who also has radar, so that's not going to be good. Fortunately, he's about 12 kilometers away, so he's not an immediate threat. A couple of the Schmarland, I think, torpedoes hit the Thunderer over there. Unfortunately, Chaos Bug's torpedoes have fallen short. Chaos Bug pops his smoke and starts farming damage. Now, the important distinction between the Commonwealth Daring here and the Royal Navy Daring is that the Commonwealth Daring has the Commonwealth Creeping Smoke Screen, so you can keep moving, provided you keep the throttle at one quarter or below, and continue to manoeuvre while staying inside the smoke. Both Chaos Bug and the Schmarland Spider Sense were tingling there. He knew there was an enemy destroyer nearby, and there are in fact two. He popped his Hydro, and the Schmarland popped his radar, and he wastes no time whatsoever in giving that enemy gearing the good news. As the enemy Halland quite rightly decides, screw this, I'm out of here. The gearing, on the other hand, bad idea gearing. There are five ships shooting at him right now. 
And even though Chaos Bug had to nose out of that smokescreen in order to respot the gearing, there was basically nobody there for the gearing to shoot at. That was a terrible decision. Pushing into an attack without any clear target to shoot back at while getting shot at by up to five enemy ships. So, first kill and first blood to Chaos Bug 45. Credit where credit's due, of course. That kill probably wouldn't have been entirely possible without the assistance of the Schmarlin's radar. Even though it didn't last very long, it did provide vital intelligence and allowed Chaos Bug to keep up a withering hail of fire and do the lion's share of the damage to the gearing before finally finishing him off. 31,000 damage? Not bad. Enemy Grozovoy spotted. And the enemy Des Moines was last seen sneaking behind an island slightly less than 10 kilometers away, so he is now within radar range of the Des Moines, so he's going to have to play this carefully. The smoke screen ain't going to help if you get radared. Although careful positioning will. Right now, it wouldn't matter if the Des Moines were to raid on him, because the only ship capable of shooting back at him would be that Venezia over there. He still has the smoke going. It lasts nearly two minutes, although it's about to expire, as is the Hydro. But in my experience, players with radar tend to not use it unless they can personally take advantage of it. And with the Des Moines behind an island, he's extremely unlikely to use his radar to come to the assistance of a teammate like the Venezia over there. But still, it doesn't pay to take chances, so Chaos Bug opening the distance between himself and where the Des Moines was last spotted. I think they want to get into and flip Cap Circle Bravo, but right now the Des Moines is still positioned to provide radar coverage of that central cap. There's at least one enemy destroyer in there, as well as the Venezia and a Montana. Oh, and there's the Z-52. And it looks like somebody's been getting the better of the Marceau over there. Now, despite the Marceau's lack of health, in a straight-up gunfight between the Z-52 and the Marceau, I'd still put my money on the Marceau. But the Z-52 isn't stupid. The Marceau is being spotted by the Hercurius aircraft. The Z-52 is smoked up. Chaos Bug launches his torpedoes into the smoke. And the Z-52, of course, also has very long-range hydro. So, even though the aircraft are gone, the Marceau is still spotted. He's been forced to charge the smoke screen, And unfortunately for him... He's counter-detected the Z-52 right before he gets slammed by a whole bunch of 16-inch shells from the Montana on the far side of Cap Circle Bravo. That was some pretty good shooting from the Montana. Chaos Bug did manage to score a hit, and he is in hydro range of the Z-52. The question here is, does the Z-52 want to get into a gunfight with a vampire? Apparently he does. I guess he feels like he doesn't really have much choice with the island behind him there, cutting off any immediate retreat, but he is not enjoying the treatment he's receiving from Chaos Bug here. I mean, he's doing some damage in return, but his engine was just knocked out. Looks like he's used his damage control to get the engine back up and extinguish the fires. But then he does something more than a little bizarre. His engine's back up, he just used the damage control to fix it, but then he starts slowing down to a stop, and well, yeah. It can't be that his smokescreen was about to come off cooldown. It's still active behind him, so I don't know why. Maybe he was trying to put Chaos Bug's aim off by varying his speed, but slowing down was not the answer. And there's kill number two. So, two enemy destroyers taken care of. The Montana and the Venezia have both backed off. There's still no sign of the Halland or the Grozovoy who were lurking around the general vicinity of Cap Circle Bravo. The Des Moines is probably still there. Difficult to really say for sure at the moment. But if you don't know for sure one way or the other, you should probably always err on the side of caution and just assume that if the Des Moines could be there, he probably is going to be there. And in fact, he is still there. He's just been spotted. There he is. So he is still definitely very much in a position to provide radar coverage of Cap Circle Bravo. Nevertheless, it looks like he's the only ship, because the Grozovoy just got spotted momentarily down in that direction, so it looks like the Des Moines is the only ship that could actually threaten a takeover of Cap Circle Bravo. And there's a nice convenient island in the middle of the Cap Circle that can shield you from any shots fired by the Des Moines. So you have to think to yourself, and there he goes, he looks like he's uh, crossing the open water gap there on the far side of the Cap Circle. So bearing in mind where the Des Moines is and where he's going, Chaos Bug needs to figure out where he can go to flip that cap and if the worst comes to the worst, and the Des Moines, realising that the cap circle right next to him is being flipped, decides to use his radar, where can you position yourself to minimise any damage that you might take from it? 
and it does look like Chaos Bug is going to go for it, so let's see how he does it. Checking what he can do with the torpedoes there, which are slightly different from the torpedoes carried on the Daring, even though the Vampire is a Daring class ship, it is slightly different. The torpedoes have an extra 2 kilometers range, 12 kilometers over the Daring's 10. And it looks like, yep, he's using that island to allow him to get some shots on the Des Moines, and the Des Moines has got himself into an extremely uncomfortable position. He's getting bitch slapped right through the bows there by the battleships in front of him on with the 18 inch guns and sure enough he's popped his radar. But even though he's managed to detect Chaos Bug there is absolutely nothing he can do about it. In fact he's not actually in line of fire from anybody on the enemy team with the possible exception of the Montana down there, but he's got destroyer problems of his own, which he appears to have resolved on his own. He's sunk the gearing with his secondaries. That Montana's been doing very well against destroyers so far. Now, the Des Moines starts reversing, and he's not doing it because he wants to try to catch Chaos Bug while his radar lasts. He's doing it because he's having 18-inch armor-piercing shells slapped through his bows and citadeling him from the front. Uh, he's probably regretting his choice to move forward and occupy a position around the side of that island because it did him no good whatsoever. He was able to radar Chaos Bug but he wasn't able to bring his guns to bear on him and Chaos Bug was positioned well enough that nobody else was able to do so either. Which meant that despite being spotted with his guns blazing Chaos Bug was able to flip that cap without any interference at all from the enemy team. Also and equally importantly the enemy team have now lost their only radar ship. There was a fairly furious exchange of fire going on over there to the east in the direction of Cap Circle Charlie. It did cost the team a gearing and a thunderer, but it cost the enemy team a Des Moines, a Kremlin and a Montana. So uh, we're going to call that a worthy exchange. And the enemy team have now been driven from Cap Circle Charlie. And Chaos Bug's team should be able to flip it without any further problems, giving them control of all three Cap Circles. And they're probably going to need all three of the cap circles, because at the moment they're behind on points, although not by much, and if they can flip all three caps, they're going to go ahead on points pretty quickly. But they only have a one kill lead. And despite Chaos Bug's best efforts, they're not going to hold on to that one kill lead for too long. They've just lost a Yamato. The kills are now even. They're just about to flip cap circle Charlie, though. And they manage that. And as Chaos Bug suddenly finds himself in an extremely target-rich environment, the enemy Halland manages to find the friendly Petra Pavlovsk with one of his torpedoes, which means the Schmaland now is the only radar left on the team, because of course the friendly Austin, I think, is the only high-tier American cruiser that does not come with a radar. Nevertheless, they do have those three cap circles, and the points coming in from those caps provide them with a very, very well-needed buffer. They just need to finish this for now. There it is, they got him. Scratch one Gros Secure first, and one extremely long range and long duration Hydro. Again, very useful if you're in a destroyer with a creeping smoke screen. The problem that Chaos Bug is experiencing now is that he's having to decide amongst conflicting priorities. On the one hand, he obviously doesn't want to get spotted because, well, with an Akuryu's aircraft circling overhead, that sort of thing happens. But on the other hand, there's an extremely angry smokescreen in front of him that contains a Grozovoy. Not only that, but the enemy Halland just got spotted. There he is. The thing is, none of these guys are going to stay spotted, particularly the destroyers, if Chaos Bug is lurking inside his own creeping smoke. So... He's trying to balance the necessity to not get shot at with the equally important necessity of spotting those enemy destroyers and for that he has to keep increasing the throttle to just poke the nose of the ship out of the smoke screen in order to try to reacquire those destroyers as targets and that of course is an extremely dangerous thing to do. Now he wasn't entirely successful in that, although he wasn't entirely unsuccessful, those two destroyers are still alive, although by a freak of luck as his own smokescreen expires, the Grozovoy picked that precise moment to evacuate his own smokescreen um, with fatal results, so there's kill number four, and he's equalised the kills again. The team are still 100 points ahead, and with the positions that the enemy team are in, and the amount of health that they have left, they're extremely unlikely, with the exception of the Halland, to be threatening any of these cap circles, so... I'd say that was definitely worth doing. Finishing off the Grozovoy was absolutely the right thing to do, regardless of how much health it may have cost Chaos Bug 45. And there are the Halland torpedoes behind him. Halland spotted again. He's definitely going for Cap Circle Alpha. 
at this point, the game is pretty much in the bag. I mean, look at the health totals of the enemy ships, with the exception of the Halland, and then look at the health totals of all of the friendly ships. The only thing the team really have to do now in order to win is just not die. There's no reason for them to win any harder than they already are. Although the temptation to finish off those low health enemy ships can often prove overwhelming, but you can do that without exposing yourself to any unnecessary risk. It's when the team are guaranteed to win as long as they don't die that they often start exposing full broadside in order to get all of their guns to bear to farm those last couple of kills and it's then that teams somehow manage to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Uh, this is perfectly safe. The Venezia's guns are all pointing the other way, there's nobody else in a position to shoot at Chaos Bug. This is perfectly safe. This is not trying to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. That Yamato, however, even though the Venezia has just gone down, finished off by the Austin. That Yamato has just sailed right into torpedo range from the Venezia, in his haste to get another kill. But in a sudden plot twist, it turns out that the Yamato actually had shells in the air at the moment of his death, and he managed to get a flesh wound award by taking out the Thunderer. And there he goes, so the team are still ahead on kills and points. And it's here where Chaos Bug makes a very brave decision. I'd like to say that he was thinking, if we can just get that Halland, victory will be assured, but I'm pretty sure that what he was thinking was, I really want to crack an Unleashed. <laughs> and the Halland had a lot more health than him when we last saw him. And the Halland is no pushover in a gunfight. But then again, Chaos Bug has constantly been getting into fights with destroyers that have a lot more health than him, and he's constantly been winning them. And even if he was to lose this gunfight with the Halland, it's only going to delay the inevitable, as long as the Austin doesn't do anything spectacularly stupid. Then again, relying on your teammates to not do anything spectacularly stupid has never really been a guarantee for success. And so the result of this gunfight was actually a zero-point trade. <laughs> so he didn't cost the team anything by dying, because he did take the Halland out. Which means that in a couple of seconds, with two caps under their control, even if the Austin and Richtoven try to throw this match, there just isn't enough time left for them to do it. So that, kids, with five kills, a Kraken Unleashed, First Blood, and a Confederate Award, is a win for Chaos Bug 45 in HMAS Vampire D11, because I refuse to call it Vampire 2, because that's not its name. Good on you, Australia, and good on you, Chaosbug45. Congratulations, great result, well done, and I hope everybody enjoyed it, because that is it for today. As always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.